We're here at Xavier Lim. He's the marketing manager for um, Bluefin, the hobby division, the Bandai. First off, uh, Xavier, how was the turnout for GWBC uh, this year compared to last year's show? It's pretty good. We had uh, 35 entries this year with about uh, 27 unique uh, individual contestants. Uh, we had a large uh, showing of really, really well done kits this year. Very high tier uh, competitive uh, competi competitors that entered. You'd say definitely an improvement over last year? Uh, yeah, it, the, the uh, quality of uh, the entries improves every year. Uh, even the um, faces that we see uh, from year to year, their work improves tremendously every time we see new work from them as well. Awesome, awesome. As a Gunpla Builder yourself, and I'm assuming that you're also one of the judges, correct? Yes, yes, I'm one of the judges. Um, can you give any tips to any um, aspiring builders on what it takes to place at GWBC? So, uh, at competitions like these, uh, it's starting to come down to the point where you need to really get your technical uh, and painting abilities really, really perfected. Uh, some of the entries, they uh, the ones that were near the top for placing close to the best of show, which would have won the competition, it came down to us splitting hairs over really small things, even removing like the uh, flash molds that are on the individual fingers of the master grade kits. I know, like uh, particularly a few of the kits, we saw that the flash mold on the fingers were still there, but some of the better ones that was removed. And so it's coming down to like really nitpicky things at high tier level competition, where everything is already so good that you start looking for flaws that are really small. So overall, you'd say you're pretty happy with this year's uh, GWEC for the N NYCC. Yeah, yeah, definitely for sure. Mm -hmm. What are the top sellers been for this past year? Uh, so the anything from the Build Fighters uh, series has been really good. Even the both the high grade, the master grade kits that have come out for that. It really helps that uh, it's been uh, streaming on YouTube officially. So there's been a lot of uh, interest into getting those model kits that are featured on the show. Any underperformers? Uh, well, you know, well, Wing consistently sells very well every year. That's nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, Unicorn's finished, and so we're seeing the uh, last spikes of it. The Neo Zeong's been selling pretty well as good. Speaking of the Neo Zeong, um, have you guys mostly been uh, bringing that to the show, or you guys? Well, I know that uh, at AX, you guys were actually shipping it to people. Or were buying it at the show. Yeah, we we sold quite a few here at New York Comic Con. Also, they've been getting the uh, the bag that comes with it. Uh, our retailers we supply to they will order it every once in a while so it's going to be it's doing pretty well this year we expect the sales to sort of uh slow down after this year ends though probably going to holiday season will be pretty strong though yeah yeah but after the year ends so uh, this unicorn episode 7 is already finished there's no more Gundam unicorn coming out so we, we will expect the neo zeong to sell pretty well for good portion of the till the end of this year and then it'll peter out and become sort of uh, like the dendrobium where uh, it'll sell once it's reproduced again, but I don't see it being reproduced for a while. How is the Barnes & Noble partnership going? The Barnes & Noble is selling very well uh, for the, uh, in the model products that they've already been retailing. It's going to expand again more uh, for their next um, inventory refresh. So you'll see some more new kits. What determines the selection of kits available at Barnes & Noble? Uh, we, we help uh, select the ones that uh, we feel will best represent the uh, Gundam model product line and that have very high popularity to ensure that the items are moving consistently within the stores. Uh, we want, we, since you know, they, they're not necessarily very familiar with every single Gundam ever, so we provide advice on which uh, items we feel will sell uh, very well at their stores. Awesome. Um, we've seen a lot of great displays at Barnes & Noble uh, for the kits. Uh, what goes in the process of planning which kits get displayed and also how do you guys maintain the consistency of the displays? So uh, we try to display what's, what's actually selling. Uh, the fixtures at Barnes & Noble, the display is set up so that there's a glass shelf and there's uh, shelves underneath them. Uh, the shelves underneath them are supposed to be the products that are on display above. But uh, sometimes we will put in other items in the displays, like uh, at Union Square right now, there's uh, the G-Cell from uh, Reconquista and G's on display is there as well. They should probably be uh, carrying that earlier next year once their inventory refresh begins again. I see, I see. As a fan who remembers the days when one can walk into a major retail store like Toys R Us or Target and purchase Gunpla, um, 
personally, how close do you think we are to getting that again, if at all? The thing with the like the Poppy model products is that you know they're not they're not for mass market like Target, Walmart, those stores. They're they're really intended for uh, stores that don't have. Uh, that type of restriction in terms of how the product is going to be placed on their shelf, the price point, uh, modification to fit the retailer specification. So the stores that we're supplying are more specialty, comic, anime, uh, gift, or, or like Hastings and Barnes and Noble, they don't necessarily have restrictions where we have to completely change the packaging to get the product onto the shelf. I see. So most likely, pretty much the collector's market, direct market, is mostly where it's going to be. Of course. Speaking about Gundam Wing earlier, um, recently the Wing Zero Custom was announced for the RG line, and also they announced the other um, Endless Waltz uh, mobile suits as well. <laughs> um, and they're all upcoming. Um, as Gundam Wing is so popular in the States, did the U.S. play any part, the man play any part in um, deciding to choose Gundam Wing on the next RG line? Well, you know, so, you know, they planned the products based on Japanese demand primarily. I mean, Gundam Wing is very popular in Japan, despite what some people think. It's not really a surprise it would have come along eventually anyway. Uh, but, you know, next year is the, it's an anniversary year for Gundam Wing again, so we'll probably see more Gundam Wing merchandise coming out as well. Awesome. Uh, well, we like Gundam Wing, um, the Toggies 3 MG, any chance of a U.S. release? Not as it's currently being uh, advertised or in that package. Um, based on feedbacks, are fans happy with um, how the RE100 line is being so far? Well, I mean, it's only one kit so far, and the Nightingale isn't technically the best representation of the line just because it's, in a, it's so monstrously large. Uh, I mean, the other upcoming suits that are coming out, like the uh, Mark III or the uh, GPO4, they're not so big and completely odd, they're probably more of a better representation of how more conventional designs will play out in that line. Awesome. One of the biggest releases of this year, of course, the PG Unicorn. What can you tell us about that? Uh, you know, so what we already know is that it's going to have uh, an LED gimmick feature that's sold separately as a set. The actual Unicorn itself will be able to transform between its Destroy and Unicorn modes. There's also a third mode that they're going to reveal on November 21st. Uh, the antenna for the uh, Gundam Unicorn has, um, uh, has a magnet gimmick where the, uh, the horn that splits and comes together, it's through the use of magnets, so it'll stay flush when it's closed. Uh, there's some gold parts on the antenna as well to differentiate its interior and exterior. Uh, they've, uh, they've really focused on making the uh, posability and articulation on the Unicorn uh, very high for this perfect grade, so the knee has some extending gimmicks in order for it to uh, be able to bend properly. Do you rec recommend people to buy also the LED set? Yeah, the, the Psycho Frame LED effect when it's revealed on the 21st is going to be very good. It has a, ver it has a, it has a sequence effect as well, so it'll power up uh, sequentially in sections just like it did in the OVA. It'll have an auto shut off gimmick. Uh, the eyes have LED as well as the psycho frame. It's going to be very nice. And it's, it's one way of um, Bandai cutting down the cost of the actual Perfect Grade Unicorn because together the Perfect Grade Unicorn plus the LED set makes it the most expensive Perfect Grade ever. But since the LED set is optional, getting the actual Perfect Grade by itself becomes uh, remarkably affordable. I see, I see. Um, being that two Gundam series are currently running, do you guys anticipate that the demand of Gunpla will be even greater than normal in the coming months? Yes, and also next year will be the 35th anniversary of the Gundam model product itself. So we're going to expect another boom like five years ago when it was the 30th anniversary. How have the um, orders for the Build Fighters Try and Recon Geese been so far? Well, Build Fighters Try and Recon Geese NG, they've only started getting their kits in this month and a few weeks ago. So we don't necessarily have data to properly project that kind of uh, data analysis yet. Has the fan response been pretty good so far with the display? Yes, yes, yes. Awesome. Um, any message for our fans? Well, you know, the there are, there's uh, Bluefin and a lot of other companies here in the US, we are making inroads into getting more Gundam-related stuff here. 
Uh, I know Right Stuff, they announced yesterday they're going to be distributing the media. We're pursuing other Gundam merchandise ventures as well to get more other types of Gundam product here in the U.S. So keep on the lookout for that. Thank you, Xavier. Thank you.